Today we've got some classic Lotus driving machines that I wasn't allowed to drive. We've got a wild flying Nikon Z9 that I wasn't allowed to fly. And a sneaky peek at prototype that isn't a leak because we're allowed to show you and I wasn't allowed to drive it. Well that's cool because I had a blast with the new Nikon Z9 and that doesn't really need to sing or shout. There you go. That's the 20 FPS burst. And just before we carry on this video, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. I mean, this is Lotus's HQ. This is their test track. This is where they make the cars. This is not for everybody to come around and have a track day. We're very lucky to be here with Amy Shaw. Nikon crew to look at this. I don't know why I'm, I'm speaking so quietly because there's nobody else around. Not even a load of staff, they're not here. Well, actually, they're driving it, driving the cars, but still, VIP access to this. And those. <laughs> and those, yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a S trait. <laughs> you have to have that in uh, back in the days. Oh, I love the colours. <laughs> yeah. They don't do now, do they? It's all grey and black. Oh, styled by Giugiaro. He did some Nikons. F4. I can see the connection now. Oh, it's yellow as well. Yellow and black. Perfect. Giugiaro. I see the connection. That's what they've done, isn't it? And that one's gold and black as well. So. Oh, it's all starting to make sense now. Flying Z9. Z9 Air. Yes. <laughs> we have, I mean, we have been hearing. Oh, this is a pro mirrorless. This is a pro mirrorless. Not until now. Yeah. I mean, we've got sort of pro mirrorless cameras out there already, but this kind of really does, it feels D6-like. It's got the battery grip integrated, you know. It's not a, one that you add on to it, so it does feel just like a D6. It is a bit slimmer, you know, it's not as, as thick and chunky. <laughs> it, looks, it looks like a beefed up Z6 slash Z7. I'd put a Z7 in there because this is 45 megapixels. It's not a low megapixel count, 45 megapixels. And it does that at 20 FPS. But the thing is, one interesting feature of this is that well, it's completely silent. Listen to that or don't listen to that. Well, every mirror can do silent mode. Yeah, but this is completely silent. I mean, that's it. That's all you've got. I don't know if you heard, and it wasn't Tony that leaked it this time. Yes, the Z9 can do a 20 FPS burst silently. That's Amy Shaw hanging out from there, taking photos. Action. That turbo sound. Weird seeing you pointing the camera there and then that slow sound. It is, isn't it? It's, From your camera. I f it feels like there should be more drama, especially when it comes to action. You're used to hearing like clack, 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 clack. When, when you're, you've got something fast moving, you expect this to be as loud, as animated, but it's not. Totally silent, just like this. I could, I could be lying to you. There you go. That's the 20 FPS burst. It's a wind noise. I mean, it, yeah, it'll be like tumbleweed. Because when you look at it, I mean, that's not the shutter. That's just to protect the sensor from dust. And they say this is a harder plastic, than, plastic yeah. than a normal shutter. So. It's, it's Hollywood plastic. No, not that kind of plastic. It's good plastic. It's tough plastic. It's Dwayne Johnson plastic. I'm not saying that he had uh, plastic surgery. We're not going to test that. We're not going to, this is the only one. We're very lucky to have this, so let's not test 
how tough that plastic is. We took over 3,000 shots with the Z9 and couldn't find any evidence of rolling shutter effects in photos, and that's despite having cars speeding past and camera being panned with a long tele-lens. We can't quite confirm that. <laughs> we can't get it to get rolling shutter yet, but also this is a prototype, so we don't know. It could be even better. We, yeah. don't, we don't have a gob swing to test it. I mean, apparently they've got a few firmware updates until release, so this is pre, 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 pre yeah. firmware. But I mean, we can just, I don't know. That's how early we are at this time. <laughs> well, I guess we'll just have to do more testing in a controlled environment when we borrow the final firmware unit. Say when I'm, when I'm taking like one shot, you get a uh, blackout, just so you know you've taken a shot. But with, when you, I'm on a burst now, so I'm just taking one shot every now and then, and then it has a bit of blackout just to let you know that you've taken the shot. But when you suddenly press it all the way for a burst, no view find blackout. It just automatically... Yeah, it blacked the first shot. Yeah. So that you know it's doing something. Yes. Because <laughs> I'm always, especially when it's completely silent, you don't want it to be like, uh, is it taking a shot? What, what's going on? You want to know that something's happening. There you go. <laughs> Makes sense. Now I just got to delete a load of them. <laughs> oh yeah, the mode dial here. Yeah, like the D6, isn't it? But continuous low, continuous high, timer, and then um, just whatever. That is actually all of them, because there's just so many of them. And on top, you've got another button here. So when you press that, and you look on the screen, you can access all of them using the front and the rear dials. Uh, 20 FPS, 15, 12, 10 FPS. But, rear dial here, I mean, I say 20 FPS, it goes up to 30. 30 not enough? Uh, 120. How <laughs> about 120? I mean, this does this at 11 megapixels. So, you know, there's a bit of a compromise there, but it does, I mean, it doesn't stop after one second. Some cameras, they have a really in, insane high burst rate and it does it for like half a second. 120 FPS, but not even for a second. Yeah, second. Nikon, Sony, they've all done it. That's great. Okay, I've got this now, just for, for giggles. 120 FPS, there we are. Of course, that 120 FPS is limited to 11 megapixels, but that is still bonkers mad. With the 20 FPS bursts, hold down the right arrow in Lightroom and it's like watching a video with each frame being 45 megapixels. With the 120 FPS burst, it's like watching a load of learner drivers driving around a track. It's slow motion with 11 megapixel stills. For electronic shutter burst, the Canon R3 and Sony A1 outnumber the Z9 in terms of FPS, but the R3 does that 30 FPS with 24 megapixels. The A1 does 30 FPS with lossy compressed RAW 50 megapixels. The Z9 does 20 FPS with none compressed RAW 45 megapixel images. The Z9 is part D6, part D850, part Z. It's high res, high FPS in a smaller but ergonomically fantastic body. And this uh, the screen, it tilts, tilts a lot, lots of angles actually. <laughs> it's like when you go to the camera shops or you go to Nikon HQ or something and you see the, those kind of exploded cameras where they've been <laughs> taken apart. <laughs> So it does, it does, uh, it does one of those, gangster style. It does that. It does that, you know, top down, and a, a sort of whatever that is, but not selfie style. Can you imagine that? Twenty FPS, silent shooting selfies. No, thank you. Also, I kind of think when you do a portrait, and then when you flip the screen up, it flip more than other camera this flip to 90 degrees yeah, i think i think you're right because some other some other cameras that do this is yeah, kind of like that or maybe maybe some of them like do that but this actually like yeah, 90 degrees this goes away so you can do waist level kind of stuff or really low down i think this is like only reserved for pro pro level cameras isn't it 
you only Nikon get range. That. You, you only get this uh, viewfinder ring. So the viewfinder is, I like the viewfinders on the, the, the Z6 and Z7s. There's something about them, they, they feel quite, um, I mean, obviously it's a screen in there, but they felt very, very nice and natural. But this is, this is massive, it's huge. So it's 3.69 million dot EVF, but uh, 120 FPS refresh rate. That is the card flap there. Open the flap. What have we got? Two XQDs. But yeah, I mean, the body, if you're used to shooting with the D6, any pro level Nikons, it feels kind of the same. You don't have the LCD screen down here at the bottom that you know, oh no, the D6s do. Someone is going to, somebody is going to complain. Oh no, that. oh no. You've got this screen here. This is, um, I, I, you know, for some reason I thought this would be bigger. This looks similar to the one. No, it's, it's a bit bigger than the one on the Z6 too. But that's a very big Z9 battery. This this must be the same as D6. Yeah. There you go. I, I just like that. It's, it's, it feels very uh, industrial. But like Oof. a gun. <laughs> yes. Reload. Reload. But you won't be you won't be reloading for a while with a, with a battery that size. That's an interesting little nub in there, on the side. You're thinking, what is that? Is that, is that doing the same job as that? Because it feels like it. But when you press it, and then you use the rear dial to change from AFS, AFC, manual focus, and then the front dial, there you focus the zones. So yeah, an auto-focusing system is improved. It's got an X-Speed 7 sensor. I mean, not sensor, it's got an X-Speed 7 processor. So it's faster better. The autofocus points are the same, 493, 90% coverage. But uh, most importantly, I think this might be exciting to any Nikon fanboys, 3D AF tracking. You know, autofocus, the trend for autofocusing is IAF, animal AF, and it's got vehicle AF. So for the vehicle AF, you get planes, trains, automobiles, motorbikes, bicycles, not skateboards. That's not a vehicle anyway. That's a, that's a board with four tiny wheels on it. No boat yet, but maybe no. later. No, <laughs> that's, the, that's the next firmware update. So humans, you've got your head, eyes, head, shoulders, <laughs> knees and toes. Knees and toes. <laughs> knees and toes. <laughs> so yeah, torso, face, eyes, general head, um, what else? The body, the body in general? People, people pe just it detects people. I am so grateful that now it's got 3D AF tracking. That is what for any Nikon user, for any pro Nikon user, or anybody who uses the, you know, the higher grade Nikon DSLRs, you want the 3D AF tracking. This is it. This is what you've been waiting for. It just, it just makes. <laughs> that's the, that's the noises Z9 around here. <laughs> props to the man flying the thing with props for tracking that Elise, but also to the Z9 for adding vehicle tracking. Focus with a half press and let the focus follow the thing with wheels so you can concentrate on composing. The Blackout Freeburst is great when you're shooting at 20 FPS or more. By the way, you can check out the buffer indicator on the bottom right to see how many shots I just took. That's practically nothing for the buffer capacity of this camera. Every shot 45 megapixels and the focus is absolutely fantastic, spot on with every single one of them. It's not just cars, it does humans, eyes and animal AF tracking, but the only animals here are the horses under the bonnet. It's a smart system, even when the subject is partially blocked, it sticks to the subject like a simile that you expected me to put in here. Well, they say kind of unlimited burst rate, whatever that means. I.e. technically, pull glasses down nose, it's not unlimited, but practically it is when you're shooting with 45 megapixel high efficiency raw shots. You don't need to have your finger permanently on the shutter all the time, but when you're taking a load of shots, it's good to know that the camera is ready for the next car coming around the corner. But this is, I think it's important that they get something out like this while there aren't too many pro level full frame mirrorless cameras out there. So they had to make a big splash 
and then making that splash by making a camera that is really capable of stills. But no, not only that, good at video as well. I think this is where Nikon can completely smash it out of the park. They don't have silly cameras to sell, no doorstep to doo-doo like on. Cake. And for video, they've pumped out the hot stuff. The good stuff, not the doo-doo. It has high resolution video covered, high frame rates, raw video and ProRes internal, 422 10-bit all-in camera, no overheating and unlimited recording, and very minimal rolling shutter visible, and more to come. I don't know if they, I don't know if they can say it, but I'll say anyway, but, uh, and then they will have 8K60. And I'll have to say, by the way, stabilize it, because this lens is not, um, I've changed from 70 to 200. Stabilization, even with a lens like this, is, is really good. Handheld. This is a 85 1.8. What is the world coming to? You know, somebody's been busy during lockdowns. I mean, first they, they announced that they were going to make an announcement about the Z9 oh, yeah. some time ago. I thought, oh no. I, I did worry that it was sort of an announcement because, uh, you know, Sony had one in the works, Canon, Canon had one in the works, and it's sort of like a uh, yeah, we got one too as well, just to let you know. But no, <laughs> yes. this does all the talking. Oh, and one more thing, one very juicy thing. Uh, we'll see a prototype. Yeah, you know. when we are at the Lotus headquarter. <laughs> this is going, going to happen. <laughs> That's louder. <laughs> yeah, the loudest thing at the minute is the drone. One silent beast, another silent beast on a track. I don't know what's more impressive, the drone flying or the prototype Lotus, but throwing the Z9 in my hands into the equation and it's no competition. I'm pretty smitten with its capabilities. Dare I say the A1 feels a bit like a, it's a pro level full frame mirror is dressed up in a cheapskate body. <laughs> that, this. Yes. There's nothing cheap about that. And you feel like you don't have to worry about uh, bump, bump it in on a yeah. wall or something. We, we can do the, the rock. durability test that we used to do. Oh yeah, let's do it now. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of Nikon users, pro Nikon users, this is what they've been waiting for. The Z6, Z7, nice cameras nice mirrorless cameras but this is something to aspire to something to look forward to to save up for you want to invest in a system that has some big potential and oh boy does this have huge potential even not just for nikon shooters i think this now they're getting this out now they're kind of saying this is what we're capable of yeah. this could potentially attract a lot more than just Nikon users. That's what they need to do. Make a bold statement. These are oh so exciting times, not just for Nikon fanboys. With the Z9, there's every reason Nikon can lead the way, not just offer us two camera. Specs wise, it's impressive, but it's the complete package. The way it feels, the way it shoots, and precise and reliable way it performs with fast moving subjects. It instills you with confidence in its capabilities. It feels like this is the camera to show that Nikon can make a mark with mirrorless now and for the future. Their vision for high performance in the future is without shutters. I can't say how people will react to this, but it works, and I couldn't find any initial evidence to show why it could be problematic. From what I heard, it's going to be attractively priced, but it's not just a numbers game. I definitely need to test this complex beast out a bit more. At least I do, if that means I can try out the Z9 again. And just before we get to the end of this video, I want to talk a little bit about Skillshare. If you want to fill your head with useful stuff and learn some new skills, then you might want to check them out. They've got some superb classes, now including ones such as MKBHD's fantastic guide on how to get going with YouTube. Now the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium, so you can explore your creativity and enjoy unlimited learning and creative exploration. Link is down below in the description box. Thanks for watching. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>